It's time to step into the Coming Out Lounge, a cool, safe space to be true to your sexual self. With your host, Rick Clemens. Rick has helped hundreds of people come out of the closet, and now each week he's bringing you cool insights for loving and accepting yourself, boosting your self-confidence, and living a guilt-free, purpose-filled life on the other side of the closet doors. Cuddle up with yourself and get ready for heartwarming coming out stories, ideas for living authentically, and tips for being fully self-expressed. Now here's your host, Coming Out Coach Rick. Hello, Closet Busters. It's time once again to stop the closet dwelling and to step out, step up, and to step into living your powerful truth. But here's what I know is sometimes in order for us to really get to stepping into living our powerful truth and stepping out to be who we are, sometimes we just got to take a step back and, and really listen. Listen to our bodies. What are they? What's our body trying to tell us? What is it trying to help us realize and how are our bodies like positioning to really help us create or maybe even avoid some of those monumental breakthroughs in life? Well, today on the Coming Out Lounge podcast, we're going to do a little bit of what I call body whispering and breakthrough listening. Now, as crazy as that may sound, our bodies are one of those things that can kind of guide us. As much as our hearts and our logical minds can guide us, our bodies can also guide us as we step through those closet doors. In fact, I brought in someone really special that can really help us sort out how we can listen more closely to our bodies and follow the calling to go for those really big breakthroughs in life and and even to start truly building the life we're dreaming on the other side of the closet door. So without much further ado, I want to bring in somebody who's a really good body listener and breakthrough whisperer to help us just really get into this today is my fellow friend, coach, speaker, Jackie Thomas. Hey, Jackie, thanks for being here today with us. Thank you for having me, Rick. I am so excited to have this conversation, and I'm going to confess to the listeners what happened when you and I had our pre chat before we did the show. I was actually really, really feeling crappy that day. And what I loved about what Jackie did and what you did was so powerful for me is the first thing you said was, Well, can I ask you a question? I said, Sure. And Jackie said, so is there something different? Is there something big going on in your life right now? And I said, yeah, you know, I'm really calling, being called to do some bigger things in my life and stepping into some bigger places and stepping onto some bigger stages and so on and so forth. Now, ironically, what I was suffering with, those of you that are listening, was I was going through some bouts of strep throat. And a new bout had just hit literally the day that Jackie and I were having this conversation. And it was those words that Jackie asked me that got me really thinking. And she basically said, well, your body is trying to catch up with what's really going on in your life. I have to tell you, Jackie, that was like (laughs) the best thing I had heard through that whole bout. Because this was bout number two of strep. And... It was kind of ironic because as soon as we got off the phone that day and I really leaned into that and I did go take a nap and stuff, but when I woke up from that nap, I felt completely different. I was still fighting it, but I started to realize you were right. You had hit the nail on the head that I'm being called to something bigger and my body's adjusting because it's going to take a lot of powerful stuff to get where I'm going to go. So of course now the question on my mind is how the heck do you know to do that girlfriend? (laughs) I mean, it was really amazing. It was really cool. So you do a lot of this kind of work. I know you you do this body stuff and this listening. So why don't you tell our listeners, you know, some of the work that you've been trained in as far as what I call the body whisperer, but I know that's not what it's called. Well, certainly. My whole journey started when I wasn't feeling well. Mm Mm-hmm probably about eight years ago and wasn't feeling very good, had been to the doctor. The doctor did your basic tests and said, there's nothing wrong with you. Go home. Mm. And the more people you talk to, the more that story is so common. People all the time, they go to their doctor and nothing's wrong with them, but they still don't feel well. Now I had been blessed. Someone came into our life and they had said, you know, Jackie, there's this therapy called body talk. And of course, that song ran through my head at the time. Yeah, you know that song? Yep, yep. I thought, that sounds really kind of crazy, actually. However, I was at the point where I was willing to try anything. Mm -hmm. So I went to see this lady, and she says, well, Jackie, there's something about a parasite 
four years ago and a fish. And I left I left that day thinking, this lady is is crazy. I don't understand what she's saying. I'm not sure about any of this stuff. However, when I went home and I started to think about it, I thought, oh my goodness. Four years ago, I went to Mexico with an impaired immune system and had been feeling worse ever since I got back. But the decline was so gradual. And I kept going to her and going to her, and she had said, well, try some oil of oregano and green tea, just regular grocery store green tea. I did that. In the meantime, I was going to the doctors, and the doctor referred me to a specialist, went to him, and I said, is it possible I just have parasites? He's looking for Crohn's, colitis, cancer, all these things. He says, well, maybe. Have you ever been tested? I said, no, I, I don't think so. Right. He looks in my file, and sure enough, I had parasites. Mm. I had parasites, and the doctor never told me. I said, well, will you check for them when, you're, when you do the colonoscopy now? He says, yes, most certainly. Checked, and they were gone. I thought, oh, my goodness, this is pretty amazing that energy therapy, oil of oregano, and green tea took away these parasites. Wow. Now, looking back, knowing what I know now, that was life's way of setting me up on a completely different journey. My body was guiding me to the place that I am today. It's amazing. So that place that you are today, I'm sensing that it's probably a place of more peace, some ha- higher levels of happiness, just because obviously we don't want parasites. So that's no. like no. A, <laughs> an obvious. No. But um, it just seems like there there's something that really happened for you in your own personal transformation too. Well, what happens when you start looking into different energy therapies is you come in. Instead of going outside for the answers, you start to come in for your answers. And when you can come in, you can start to recognize and accept, I call them inner demons or boogeymen Mm -hmm. or whatever that we don't really want to look at. And you can start to love yourself because of them, Mm -hmm. not in spite of them. And when that happens, that's when the peace starts to come. I know my husband and I, we said we'd be divorced six times over, if not for the energy therapy and having to come into ourselves, take responsibility for our demons, love ourselves because of them, and then love each other because of them, not in spite of them. So most certainly a place of clarity, a place of peace, a place of focus and vision. Wow, amazing stuff. So... As you know, this being the coming out lounge, the thing we talk about the most is people coming out of the closet, which is a very, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I mean, some people are going to say, oh, no, it wasn't traumatic. Well, there's some part, some kind of trauma that happens no matter what. I mean, you can have the easiest coming out journey in the world. There's still going to be a piece of trauma that shows up. So for people who are going through this, the reason I wanted Jackie to come on the show was I believe in showcasing a lot of different modalities. You may not want to work with a coach. You may not want to work with a therapist. You may not find that working with someone, you know, in a religious perspective who is very open and affirming in their religious viewpoint, it may not just be for you. So sometimes it's finding these other modalities that can really be supportive. So in general, Jackie, when people are under this kind of stress that's i'm gonna just make it pretty simple when they're in this stress place how does the body start to really manifest this to tell you you're heading into stress even before you quote are in stress is there different ways you've seen most certainly so things in your energy field can show up anywhere from two to five years before they actually show up in our physical bodies Mm -hmm. and that's why energy important energy work is so important but what's really neat is there's a consciousness so there's a story there's a meaning behind every single organ endocrine and body part that you have so for example i i may have a client that came comes in and they have a sore knee well there's an entire consciousness around that knee a consciousness that may be saying to them you know what i'm really scared of walking forward I'm not being very flexible, or maybe I'm not taking a strong enough stand. So there's a story that can come out. And what's important is that we listen for the little tiny aches and pains, because when we listen to those, we can dive in, we can figure out the consciousness, we can accept and move forward and clear. But what happens is most of us say, oh, it's just a pain in our knee, we won't worry about it. 
and then we keep walking forward. And then next thing you know, you have gone over and you've sprained your knee. And then the next thing you know, you've fallen and seriously hurt your knee, and now you can't walk at all. So life's always giving you little tiny hints through the body because the body is actually what's going to tell the story of our lives. It tells the secrets of the soul. Mm. That's amazing. I love tells the secrets of the soul because I think for so many of us coming through the closet doors, and I love this analogy of the energy showing up two to five years later, I think it's very true for most of us who have been hiding in the closet. The energy has always been there. The energy of who we are as this human being with this sexual orientation or gender identity in the case of my transgender brothers and sisters, it's always been a part of us. But in the moment that the closet door begins to become the focus or potentially we're going to walk through it or whatever is when that energy shows up. And, and you and I do similar similar work. You do much different energy work than I do. But I'm based, my coaching is based on energy. It's how do we show up and what's the energy that's surrounding a situation and how is energy, you know, when you're in a victim state of mind, how is that pulling away from being in a very loving and, you know, cooperative state of mind? And we look at the energies to try to help shift people. I think for most that are listening to this right now, this may be somewhat of a new concept to kind of wrap it in the whole energy work. But I would invite them to really listen as you're sharing, as I'm sharing about this energy stuff, because it typically is a simple shift. And it could be, as you said, I love the analogy of the pain in the knee and not wanting to walk forward. I was working with a client actually right after you and I had had a conversation and um, she is coming out in her own way. She's coming out. out of not wanting to be an executive at at one of the big networks here in LA. And so she's getting ready to leave her job. And she kept complaining that, you know, I've been really having these headaches and my vision's been kind of wonky and my vision's perfect. And I said, well, you know, and you and I just talked and I was thinking about some of the stuff you'd said. And I said, you know, it very possibly could be everything's just not in focus right now. And when you're not focused and you don't have clarity, this is what's showing up for you. Right. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Spot on. Most yeah. certainly. Mm-hmm. So I would love for you to talk about, you know, let's just kind of see if we can create some scenarios for people. So um, let's say that I had a client come in and, and this isn't my specialty, folks. I mean, I do some energy work, but I do it in a di- very different way. And they really do feel like um, they're having a lot of, you know, they're okay. So we're going to frame it in there. They're struggling with their sexuality. They're getting ready to, you know, try to walk through this doorway, so to speak. One of the ones that I can think of that is very common is a lot of my clients come in with this like backache, a lot of shoulder ache sort of stuff. I'd love to just kind of get your perspective on what that really could be meaning for them. Most certainly. It's interesting. I just, before this call, I was with a client, and I was actually the first one Mm -hmm. that she came out to. Wow. So she's a lesbian, and she sat in my chair one day, and she came in, and she was, I was doing a therapy called reflexology with her, and my reflexology is quite different because of the additional therapies training that I have. Right. And she started crying. She just was crying and crying and crying, and eventually... We, I provided an environment that was safe enough for her to actually come out and, and, and tell me. So one of the things for her was actually her shoulders. Mm. Now, she's a hairdresser, so she gets told a lot, well, you're probably lifting your shoulders, and, and it's the way you're standing at work, or it's the shoes you're using. And I'm not going to say that doesn't have any part to play in it. Sure. But the other part to look at is, okay, well, my shoulders are hurting because I'm carrying the weight of the world. I feel that as soon as I come out, what happens if my parents don't accept me, if my mm-hmm. friends don't accept me, if my world changes? So they're holding this heavy, heavy burden as if it's their responsibility to really pave the path. And really, the only thing that we're responsible for, each one of us, straight, gay, lesbian, what, whatever you, you are, is to be responsible to yourself. And, and the back, when it depends where in the back it is. Yeah. I have a lot of clients that will have lower back issues. Yeah. So when we look at the lower back, it can have to do with the hips. It can have to do with moving forward. But it can also have to do with money. Mm. Right? So this aspect of, okay, well, what's this? What, maybe they're in a marriage. And yeah. now the marriage is going to part. And 
how do how do I make all this work? And it's, I think sometimes in life in general we try to pre-plan so much. Yep. We spend more time worrying about the problem mm-hmm. than actually just walking through it. Right. Yeah. And I that's where that. the, the worry comes. I love that we spend more time worrying about the problem than just actually walking through it. And. <laughs> It's so prevalent everywhere I look, and especially, you know, with clients, they come in and they're, oh, you know, I've been thinking about this. I'm like, okay, have you been thinking about this or have you been worrying <laughs> about this? Because they're two different things. It's like, okay, when we, as soon as we can, as soon as we change the word, it's like, well, no, I guess I've been worrying about this. But, um, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me to hear this. So as you were talking, one of the things that I know happens a lot for my clients is, and you so brilliantly brought it up is they will be coming out of the closet and they will have been married and now there's all this money stuff that's you know happening and how do we get two houses how do we pay for a divorce you know all this sort of stuff one of the other interesting things that tends to happen and i don't know where i can't i i'll use myself as an example to a degree on this because i know kind of how it manifested for me as much as i'm attracted to men i was scared to death of the sexual aspect with men because I didn't know I I didn't know how does this work how do we do this mm-hmm. and when you were talking about the hips you know it was kind of interesting during that time now I'm going to caveat this by saying I was a cyclist so I was just starting to become a cyclist I was riding an insane amount of miles a day okay so I was riding like 70 miles a day so part of right. that's right it but what I found so interesting is I wasn't working I was I was taking a year off to kind of find myself in many, many ways. I'd taken up cycling, and I was dating a lot. And I was also, I'll admit, I was hooking up a lot, too. But every time I got ready to hook up, I had these severe pains in my hips. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I kept going, okay, is this about my cycling, or is this about something else that's holding me back? And... You know, as you just said, it's it sometimes is that holding back because it's it's not something you're ready for. And I know for me, I wasn't ready for it. And as I've worked with other people, I've seen something very similar show up. They think they're all gung ho. Okay, we can do this. We we know we're attracted to someone of the same sex, and then boom, <laughs> the big S shows up, and it's like, okay, how do I do this now? And there's interesting little pains and stuff that show up in the strangest places. Have you ever had a client that's kind of shown up in this like interesting space where sex is kind of scary to them? Most certainly. I I just love that we're going here because I'm very passionate about talking to my clients about sex because it encompasses so much of who we are and it, it can encompass so much of who we are. So most certainly when we go into that aspect of sex, what I would, what I encourage my clients to do is feel how you feel. A lot of times, so let's say we're feeling fear or we feel sadness or we're angry. We are taught in society not to feel those things. So what do we do? We turn on a happy song. We suppress it somehow. We change our thought. And then what happens is that feeling gets buried deep down inside of us, yeah. causing a physical ache or pain. However, what I say is feel it. Mm-hmm. Feel angry. Feel sad. Feel scared. And I even go so far as to tell my clients to have a conversation with their their the pain Absolutely. or have a conversation with their fear and say, I, I do this all the time. I say, I see you fear. I get it. You're there. You've shown me the way. I appreciate you. But today you go in the back seat. You don't get to you don't get to drive shotgun and give me direction. So that's one thing. First of all, is to notice what you're noticing yeah. and having the conversation most certainly about it because things like fear like you said you know now I'm now I'm entering into this different stage of my sexual life and I'm a little bit scared and fear it simply tells us that we're on the border of the reality that we currently know Mm -hmm. and when we step one foot over that's where magic happens sometimes fear is a really exciting thing and if we can we can transform our thoughts to think, yes, I'm scared. That means that I'm going to be going to do something magnificent. I mean, sure, fear protects us from some things we don't want in our life as well. But sometimes it's going to show up and say, hey, we're on the, we're on the verge of something really cool here. And recognize. And when we can have vulnerable conversations with each other and say, yeah, I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. Chances are the other person says, me neither. 
Right. Or I can help you. Yeah. We have to learn to ask for help too. And so a lot of the healing work comes to this place of seeing vulnerability as a brilliance versus a weakness too. Mm. I love that vulnerability is a brilliance it's so powerful and I think the thing that caught me as you were talking was this fear being on the border what we already know it, it reminds me of I often tell clients here's the thing when you're in fear yes you are hanging on the edge of that cliff you're hanging on to it for dear life but if you really think about most fears, when you walk through it, and so in, you know, metaphorically speaking, when you let go of the cliff, that's when the magic happens. Half the time, everything we thought was going to happen doesn't. When it does happen, it's usually not as severe as we thought it might be. And we move forward. And this vulnerability piece, I think, is, is huge. So when somebody's really feeling vulnerable, um, because a lot of people are going to feel vulnerable, trust me, coming out of the closet. Sure. Where might be some areas of their body that their body's going to start talking to them from a vulnerability space? Other than, I know, the mind and the heart. <laughs> we know that kind <laughs> of sort of stuff. But where might be some other spaces they might start to tune into this? Truthfully, Rick, I feel everyone is quite different. Yeah. But you might feel slight heart palpitations. Mm -hmm. You may start to feel your belly turn a little bit. Your shoulder might be acting out. It could be down to your your ankles and even the decision. Mm -hmm. So for example, I had a, a client that came and he also came for reflexology and I said to him, he says, I keep going over my ankle when I play hockey. It's just a weak ankle. Mm -hmm. And of course, I do my little smile and nod and laugh because I know it's more than just a weak ankle. Right. Why that ankle? Why not the other ankle? So we had this conversation and I said to him, what, what decision are you avoiding in your life? He says, I'm not avoiding any decision. I'm a, I'm a man. I'm right, good. Right. <laughs> and I said, okay. We keep talking. And as he gets more comfortable, we start talking. And we recognize the decisions he is avoiding in life. He goes home. He came for probably four more sessions. And after that, he called and said, I don't need to come back. Because every time my ankle hurts, I look at my life, look at what decision am I avoiding. Mm -hmm. I make it. And my ankle stops hurting. So it, I think it really depends where you are. But every sure. single every single thing has a consciousness, every mm -hmm. single thing that you're going through. So most certainly, you might be a person that experiences it more in a headache or a shoulders. It could be back if you're thinking financially. It could be, see, some of times our, our quads and our calves, they're going to represent a lot of heart issues. Yeah. So even when you're walking, if you bang, you're banging your leg. There's always a meaning. There's always a consciousness consciousness behind behind it. And I always say, going back to that part of worrying, worrying is like praying for what you don't want yep. to happen. Yep. And when we can focus on what we do want, that's why with my healing practice, I, I've been doing that for 10 years, and the coaching component came along, especially in regards to dream building, because you have an opportunity to use your imagination and imagination can open doorways to things we can't currently see. And I often ask my clients, what would you love your life to look like? Mm -hmm. If you really were a creator, let's just pretend, because for some people that's a little bit scary and out of the box, but what would you actually love? If, if, if you could have anything in the whole wide world, you could do anything, you could be anything. And that's where we focus. So we heal through vision, and I heal through action right. versus getting stuck in the story that they've been telling their their whole lives, so we start to change the story. That's awesome. And I love that you brought this piece up because that's where I wanted to go next was a little bit of the dream work that you do. Because as we step through the closet door, we have a <laughs> sense of relief, hopefully. Most of us, I would hope we have some relief, even if the challenges start showing up bigger. But we may have thought what it might look like on the other side, but I don't know that we really put it into action. And one of the things that I have clients do, and this is very consistent, is as I know we're getting closer and that door, you know, that door handle is just right in front of them. They're starting to reach for it. I know we're going to have this moment. As soon as I start feeling intuitively that that's where they're heading, I have them write out a narrative of what life looks like for them on the other side of the closet door. 
so that they can begin to see the vision, the dream. And I know a lot of the work you do is in this dream arena. So I'd love for you to talk about, you know, kind of what you do in that arena as well. Most certainly. I love, love, love that you do that. And I do that with my dream builder clients as well. And some of my healing clients. It's extremely important that not only do we vision it, but that we write it down. Because thinking it activates one side of our brain and speaking it activates another. But when we write it down, that's what actually activates both sides of the brain. So in my, my program, I, we, we, we think about it, we vision it, we write it down, and then we attach a feeling to it. Because when we talk about the law of manifestation, have you, have you read the book, The Secret? Yes, yes. Yes, I'm sure many, many people are familiar with the book, The Secret, and it's yeah. a beautiful introduction to the law of manifestation, but it's not all of it. So when we have something that we want, then we need to put the feeling that, mm -hmm. that we want. You know, I had a vision board, and I put up all these, these cool things I thought that I wanted, and then I went and I put a feeling with each one, how they made me feel. And I had a gorgeous pickup truck on there, and I got to it, and I, was, and I thought, yes, I want this truck. And when I searched down into myself and recognized the feeling, I thought, oh, crap, I don't want this truck. <laughs> it doesn't make me feel the way I want to feel. Right. So it's interesting. Sometimes we think we want something, but until we attach that feeling of how we're going to feel when we have it, or become it, it, it changes. Well, I think it's important too that in this journey coming out of the closet, and I, I use the metaphor of, you know, when somebody says, oh, I, I, I want to get that new car, I want that BMW, or I want to lose 50 pounds, I, I always ask the question, so how will you feel when you have that? How will you feel when you have that car? How will you feel when you, you know, have lost that 50 pounds? And it's always amazing to me how much that question stumps people. But I do it also in the how will it, how will you feel? You know, once they do start to do their narrative about what it looks like on the other side of the closet door, I verbally then start to cue and question them around. And what are you going to experience? What are you going to feel when you're on the other side of that closet door? Because it is about grounding into the feelings so that you can take it to that future space and manifest it in the way that you want to. You could you could say, I'm going to feel really crappy because nobody's going to love me. Okay, that may be one of the things, but what are some of the other feelings you're going to experience? Well, I'm going to feel freedom. I'm going to feel an integrity. I'm going to feel honest. I'm going to feel happy. I'm going to feel joyful. You know, whatever it is. I may, have, I may feel one of the best orgasms of my life when I finally <laughs> do this. You know, whatever it may be. And I love that you encourage people to talk in the sexual arena because... I think too often we get put into these closets, even after we come out, that, okay, well, we still don't talk about the sexual stuff. We just don't, you know, that's kind of the taboo talk, so to speak. And I think it's really important that if you're coming out, and this is for anybody who's listening, whether you're coming out as gay, straight, it doesn't matter to me. It, when we're coming out of anything, the more open, vulnerable, honest, and real you can be about this coming out piece whether you're coming out of a cancer scare, you're coming out as, okay, I'm on my third divorce. Okay, so I'm a serial divorcee, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> is to really feel into these feelings so that you can actually like really wrap your arms around this sort of stuff and really own it so that it becomes real for you. So we've heard you do the dream work. We know we, you do the body work and you've talked a little bit about the reflexology. Is there any other tools in your bag of tricks we haven't covered yet, Jackie? Well, the healing and energy component is quite quite Huge, broad. I'm sure. And I use them I use them all interchangeably. So yeah. the body talk, the reflex, the lymph, the Reiki, yeah. the meditations. And what's really neat and what some people have a hard time wrapping their head around is that because it's energetic, it can be done wherever, whenever. So mm -hmm. I'm in Canada yep. and I will do body talk sessions on a client in the UK wow. via Skype. Yep. It's pretty fantastic how we can we can get into that that zone. One thing I wanted to touch base on too in regards to the whole component of sexuality and bringing up sex through my clients and through research what I found is that the way we make love in the bedroom has a direct parallel to the degree in which we experience empowerment, delight, and fulfillment in the rest of our lives. 
And that's why I find it very, very important because no matter what, if there's something that comes up in life, an issue, a problem, it will almost always, not every time, but almost always show up in some way, shape, or form in your bedroom life. Mm -hmm. And as we get more comfortable and we can connect with who we are in the bedroom, whether we're straight or gay, yeah. whatever your preference is, you become more comfortable being who you are outside the bedroom as well. I agree. And I, I, I love that you brought this up because I think this is one of the hurdles that many people, we kind of started here, I guess, you know, we kind of started at the top <laughs> of the conversation about, you know, how uncomfortable people could feel when that's finally time to drop the drawers and pop off the Victoria's Secrets and get in on it. And then suddenly it's like, oh my God, how do I do this? But it's becoming very comfortable with yourself as a sexual being um, that I think is a direct parallel. I've always felt this. I mean, that was one of the things that I felt from a very, very young age. And I thought, okay, am I like the only one out here that <laughs> has this like feeling that whatever's going on in my bedroom is exactly what's kind of showing up in other areas of my life. And I'm so glad you brought that up. And the reason that I really, you know, again, I'm going to say it again, the reason I wanted to bring Jackie into this conversation today was because there's lots of different ways to heal and to walk through the closet doorways. And I feel it's really powerful when you can see some other modalities and hear somebody else talk about how they do the work because not one size fits all on any of this transformation stuff. It doesn't matter if you're trying to build a business, you're trying to get better at dating, you're trying to be a better parent, you're trying to walk through a health scare like cancer or something like that. There is no one size fits all on how you walk through and go through these big, huge life transformations. So one of the questions I always ask at the end of the show, Jackie, is, you know, somebody who's really struggling with a transition um, or coming out as a healer and a person who works with people to help them through some of these big transitions, what would be a piece of advice you'd like to just leave with them to say this will really kind of help you start to feel confident or walk through that doorway or anything that just would bring them a little bit of peace of mind in this moment? I'd like everyone listening to be able to start with this exercise. And this exercise has helped me tremendously. And it helps all my clients. And it's called the pause button. Mm -hmm. And it's when we start to tell ourselves the story. The same old story we've told ourselves again and again and again. But the story doesn't lift us up. In fact, it makes us feel really crappy. Press the pause button and say to yourself, is this what I want? Is this how I want to feel? Is this what I want this to mean? And if it's not, change it. It's that simple. A short, very quick little story. I was working a while ago at a trucking company. This was a little while back. And my boss and I were talking about some of the healing things. And I said, oh, you must think I'm really weird. He said, no, no, not weird. Little quirky. I thought, well, what's quirky mean? So thank God for Google. Google it. Right. First five words, I love. Next five word made me want to cry. Mm -hmm. But I pressed my pause button and I said, Jackie, what do, you, what do you want quirky to mean? And I wanted it to mean different, eccentric, misfit, out of the box. Right. And so that's what I chose it to mean in that moment. And I encourage everyone to do that. Press your pause button. What do you want it to mean? Not what have you been conditioned in the past for it to mean. But what do you want it to mean today that lights you up? Mm -hmm. Because everything in life can light you up. It's literally literally your choice it is yeah it's a huge choice and, and uh, one of the things that i like to talk about so much with people as i'm working with them one-on-one -on -one bringing them to this beautiful space of being authentically more who they are and being fully self-expressed is the one thing that people like to say is homosexuality is a choice and i say the only choice in homosexuality is the choice to be fully yourself that's it very plain and simple and I have to say that I've so enjoyed this time with you today. I wish we could go for another 30 minutes, hour, whatever it would take to really deep, dive deep into this. If somebody wanted to um, get in touch with you and learn more about the work you do, Jackie, what would be the best way for them to find you? The best thing right now to do would be to email me okay. at info at breakthroughcanada.com. Okay. So that's Excellent. info at breakthroughcanada.com. That's the best way right now. Or awesome to check out the website at Breakthrough Canada. Excellent. 
And if you've enjoyed what you've heard today and you got something from it, um, we'd love to hear about that. You know, just however you want to do it, email Jackie or myself. My email is rick at rickclemens.com. You can always go on to um, iTunes, Twitter, SoundCloud, wherever you may have gotten this and give us a rating and a review. You can hop over into the Facebook group and, and join me at the Coming Out Coach or the Gay Man's Life Coach or there's pl- plenty of places you can find me on Facebook. And also we can always like do the little tweet tweet stuff and Twitter back and forth to one another. And my handle over there is at Rick Clemens and the hashtag for the show is Pound Coming Out Lounge. And again, Jackie, thank you so much for being here. I enjoyed what you shared. There's so much here that I just good juicy stuff for the listeners today. So thanks so much for being here with us. Thank you, Rick. And thanks for, for doing what you do. I find that the the gay and lesbian community are leading the way for mm-hmm. everyone. Well, thank and you I love for it. So that. thank you. Yeah, I hope that's really what we're doing. And if you feel like you're leading the way, then I want to encourage you to step out, step up, and step into really truthfully leading you the way in every aspect of your life because living your powerful truth is the only thing that you can do that nobody else can do for you. And with that, we're going to wrap it up for another week of the Coming Out Lounge. Don't forget, if you're interested in getting my new book that's coming out in early 2016, hop over to rickclemens.com. Take a look at the book. It's called Frankly, My Dear, I'm Gay. There's some descriptions there. Soon there'll be some sample chapters there for you to check out as well. And with that, we're going to call it a wrap and say, until next time, be safe, be well, and continue to go out there and be yourself. I'm Rick Clemens, the host of the Coming Out Lounge, and I'll be talking to you again in just seven days. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. You've just experienced the Coming Out Lounge. Go online to www.comingoutlounge.com to learn more. And tune in again next week for more stories and tips for being true to yourself. 